The series starts with Buck and Christopher enjoying the day at the Santa Monica Pier. Buck is a firefighter at the Los Angeles Fire Department, but he's off duty recovering from a recent accident. He's babysitting his colleague Eddie's son, Christopher, who suffers from cerebral palsy. Near the beach, a girl is flying a drone, and an older man is painting a picture of the scenery using the drone before being told off by the harbor department. Meanwhile, a staff from the harbor department sees a boat out in the ocean that's too close to the pier. It turns out the boat has a family on it, with a man and a woman getting married and her son on board as well. Back at the pier, everyone starts to notice that there's no water below. Soon, a huge wave comes right toward them. The harbor department sounds the alarms, and everyone is trying to get to safety. Buck and Christopher hide in a game booth just before the wave takes over the pier. After the wave hits, Buck is shown underwater, struggling to get back to the surface. He desperately tries to look for Christopher. After successfully locating him, Buck grabs him and swims toward a floating fire truck. He puts the little guy on top of the truck, climbing on for safety. The series goes into a flashback 20 minutes before the first wave. Athena, a field sergeant, and her daughter May are getting many petties. On the drive home, a car suddenly crashes into them. Luckily, they're both safe. After not being able to open the doors on either side of the vehicle, Athena takes out a hammer and smashes the window. After getting out, she realizes that there's been a massive pileup of cars on the road. Meanwhile, Captain Bobby and the team from the Los Angeles Fire Department get ready for the search and rescue operation. Getting back to Buck and Christopher, who are on top of the fire truck and still stranded, Buck hears a woman calling for help. He saves a few people who are either injured or trapped inside their cars. At the 911 call center, Maddie, a dispatcher, who's also Buck's sister, is watching the news, seeing just how bad the tsunami was. It was caused by an 8.9 earthquake in Alaska, and it took out much of the Southern California coast. Bobby and his team hear a woman screaming for help as they continue their search and rescue. It turns out to be the bride from earlier. When they get to her, they see an antenna from a radio station pierced her son and fiancé through the abdomen to the bottom of the boat. Using a power saw, they successfully cut the son loose, the antenna still piercing him, and they get him off the boat. When another wave comes, Athena is still helping with the pileup. She helps a woman who's stuck in her car and losing blood because of a puncture in her neck. She calls May over to help keep pressure on the wound while she grabs a first aid kit from her car. Because of the wave, though, water starts coming through the sewers, and with the down power line, it makes the street very unsafe. May keeps talking to the bleeding woman to keep her awake and sitting upright. When paramedics arrive, they get the woman out and thankfully find a pulse. May starts crying because she's so relieved that the woman is alive that she kept her alive. Back at the boat, the rescue team realizes the fiancé isn't breathing, so they have to do CPR underwater. Thankfully, they manage to save him and get the whole family transported to a hospital. Meanwhile, Buck and Christopher are still on the fire truck. Bobby and his rescue team, along with Eddie, arrive at the Santa Monica Pier. There are people on top of tables and even people still on the Ferris wheel we see another firefighter named Lena helping on the Ferris wheel. At the call center, Maddie manages to operate a field hospital for injured people. Moments later, an alarm goes off in her monitor, noting another surge, the same wave, going in the opposite direction back out to sea. While Buck is helping more people get to safety, the fire truck moves because of the tsunami, and Christopher falls over. Buck notices this a while later and begins looking for the boy. He keeps asking people if they've seen a little boy with brown hair, glasses, and a yellow t-shirt. Unfortunately, he finds Christopher's glasses, but not him. The next scene goes into a flashback to 20 minutes before the first wave. We see a couple, Max and Stacy, on the brink of divorce, going to the Santa Monica Pier where they got engaged five years prior. They get on the Ferris wheel, wanting to end on a high note. Soon, the alarms go off, and the first wave is coming. 
the wave moves the Ferris wheel, and Max gets hit on the head. Bobby and Eddie are just getting to the Ferris wheel, along with several other search and rescue teams. Stacy's trying to get help since Max isn't doing too well. His head is bleeding, and he's just barely hanging on. Thankfully, the rescue team manages to get Max out and secure on board in a helicopter. After getting to the entrance of the pier, Bobby and Eddie get alerted that the rest of the team is still stuck on the other side, and trucks can't get through yet, so they have to make it on foot, wading through knee-high water. In the process, Lena is injured, so Eddie takes her to the field hospital nearby. Later, he tries calling Buck, not realizing that they were caught in the middle of the tsunami. Meanwhile, Buck is still searching for Christopher. He hears a lady yelling that there's a kid stuck under something. Thinking it's Christopher, Buck gets the kid out, but it turns out to be someone else. At the call center, Maddie is helping with the calls, telling the dispatchers where to mark a call on a priority list. Back with Athena, she's telling a group of police officers that they're the first line of defense, looking for looters and ensuring that everyone is safe, including themselves. At the emergency shelters, Buck is still looking for Christopher, spotting a little boy he thinks is Christopher, but is not. A man tells Buck that he's bleeding. Buck almost faints, but a few people catch him and sit him down. In the next scene, Athena makes her way to a call where she sees two men robbing places. Athena finds them looting animals, but they claim they're saving them, saying they're from West LA. When walking back to the car, Athena hears metal clanging. She spots someone trapped under a car and notices it's Captain Cooper of another station. His arm is pinned under the car. Athena breaks into a house so she could find something to help free Captain Cooper. She returns to him with supplies, alcohol, tools, and a rag. Then she begins to amputate his arm. At the emergency shelter, Eddie checks on Lena so someone can look at her. At the same time, Athena comes in with Captain Cooper, and Lena goes to the hospital with him. Meanwhile, Buck is still desperately searching for Christopher with no luck. He asks a nurse if she's seen him anywhere, and she recommends checking the black tent, which is in the morgue. At the call center, Maddie gets a call from Buck. He tells her that he needs help and explains that Eddie dropped Christopher off with him and that they went to the pier. Buck explains everything to her, telling her that the poor boy is gone. Not long after, Eddie spots Buck, and the latter tells his colleague what happened. When Buck is explaining everything, Eddie spots a woman holding Christopher. Thankfully, the boy is safe and sound. After the tsunami's chaos is settled and most of the people are rescued, Captain Bobby and the team move on to their next rescue mission. The team is doing a fire drill at a 35-story building. Buck, who isn't officially back in the team, is the new fire marshal. He's having fun pushing his team to do their best during the drill. The employees of the building are starting to walk down the stairs. However, one employee, Alan, in particular, doesn't seem too fond of the fire alarm. Suddenly, he has a seizure. As a colleague tries to help him, Alan pushes him, creating a domino effect, pushing the employees down the stairs one by one until the very bottom. This injures most of them. Outside, a lawyer is talking to Alan as he's going into the ambulance, trying to get him to hire him. The next day at the fire station, Eddie tells his colleague that he didn't get much sleep. His son Christopher's been having nightmares since the tsunami, waking up screaming and crying. At the same time, Buck comes into the station to drop off his fire drill report. Buck informs that the lawyer from earlier apparently wants to talk to him about the building violations. When he sees Lena, Buck realizes that she has replaced him in his job. He confronts the boss, Captain Bobby, who promises Buck his place will still be there for him when he's ready. Buck tells him he's ready now, but before they can finish talking, the alarm goes off and everyone is heading to a call. Later that night, Eddie wakes up to his son having another nightmare. The following day, he takes Christopher to see a child therapist. The therapist says that Christopher talked about being at the pier with Buck and that his subconscious is still processing the trauma. The therapist then shows Eddie drawings that his son drew of a drowning woman. Meanwhile, we see Buck meeting with the lawyer who's trying to get him to agree that there was negligence during the fire drill by Captain Bobby and his team. 
it's revealed that the lawyer is trying to sue the rescue team. Elsewhere, a mom and her two sons are driving through a mountain, and the brothers are arguing. When Judy turns around to scold them, she swerves into the other lane, almost colliding with another vehicle. When she pulls over to ensure the kids are okay, the ground beneath them suddenly falls apart. They plunge below, merely hanging above a pile of debris. After the sons call 911, Bobby and his rescue team arrive at the scene. The rescuers go down the side of the mountain. They check on the mother, who has a steady pulse but is unconscious. After securing the car, the team slowly rescues the boys. A basket is brought down for the mother. After securing her, she's pulled up before the ground once again starts giving way. Later that night, Athena and Bobby expect Buck for dinner. The latter arrives at the dinner table, and Buck tells them what happened with the lawyer. During their conversation, Bobby decides to tell Buck that it was his decision to not let him join the team just yet, as he isn't ready. Buck says that he's at 100%, but his boss doesn't think so. Enraged, Buck storms out. Later, he meets with Chase, the lawyer. Buck is now determined to sue the city's security forces. The lawyer warns him that suing the city is no small matter. If he doesn't win, he may not be an LA firefighter or a firefighter in any city. Buck says that's no problem since he doesn't have much to say to them anyway. He's alone. That night, Eddie tucks his son into bed, telling him that he can talk to him about anything. When he's leaving the room, he notices the drawing on the wall of him, Christopher, and his late wife. Eddie asks him if the drowning woman he drew is his mom. Christopher tells him he didn't want to make his dad sad. In response, Eddie tells his son there's nothing wrong with being sad. He loves his mom and always will. They have each other and they'll be okay, before sharing a warm hug. In the final scene, Buck visits Bobby and Athena, initially apologizing about dinner the other night. He then tells them he's suing the city, the fire department, and Bobby for wrongful termination. He won't stop fighting until he gets his job back, even if it means fighting his boss.